Craig, Paul, congratulations. You've managed to make it into the third round of this competition, and you are one step closer to the title of Forge and Fire champion and a check for 10 grand. Now we're sending you back to your home forges where you will recreate an iconic weapon from history. That weapon is the Macraca. The Macraca is a sickle-shaped weapon with its cutting edge on the inside curve of the blade. It was notably used by the Azande tribe, a dangerous clan that invaded and conquered Central Africa in the early 1800s. With the help of the Macraca, they took no prisoners while defending their land and resources. The sword was often used in executions to remove limbs and decapitate intruders or enemies. The Azande's fatal and terrorizing use of the Macraca is highlighted in the game, The Deadliest Warrior. You will have five days at your home forge to accomplish this task. After those five days, you will return and present your weapons to our panel of expert judges. Good luck, bladesmiths. We'll see you in five days. Good luck to you, man. We got this. Day one here at my home forge, and I'm ready to get started. We're gonna be building the Macraca. Am I saying it right? <laughs> One of the things I'm most concerned about is, is being able to present to the judges something that's worthy of using it and testing it, but I don't know, it's a strange looking weapon. First, I'm gonna go for a Damascus blade. It's got about 15 layers, I believe. So I'm gonna throw that in the forge and bring it up to a welding temperature. What I'm hoping to see when I press this billet is that it takes the weld immediately. I mean, I don't wanna see any cold spots. I can still see my uh, joints. I don't like that. Before I go too far, I'll grind it down and see what it looks like. If this doesn't go the way I've planned it, it, it's garbage. I'll have to throw it away and start over. Day two. Biggest challenges for today is coming up with a quench tank. This one's not going to work. This one will be fine for a big, long sword. It's a big, round sword. So I've had to build a new quench tank. Perfect. Oh, yeah. I'm in good shape. So I'm going into the heat treat. It's so long with my forge, you can't heat the whole blade at one time. You have to kind of drift it in and drift it out, and it's kind of a chore, but it's all I have. <laughs> Here we go. That's not hard. Son of a bitch. If you don't have a hard blade, all you've got is a real pretty piece of steel that looks like a knife. Heat treating McCracker. Take two. That drag's pretty hard. It's not hard again. Take three. God. Failed not once, not twice, three times. Perhaps it's not the steel, perhaps it's my oil. So quick phone call tells me there's quench oil in Springfield. Road trip. It's an incredible waste of time, but I've got no choice. Seems like I got my weld real good on my billet, so I'm going to try forging this blade. My plan for today is to finish my forging. I really want to make sure I don't draw this blade out too long. Otherwise, my arc will be too high. I don't want it to be too much of a curve. It's probably as straight as I'm going to get it. It's pretty vital to me to get this heat treat going and see just how this blade's going to react. All right, here we go. I'm looking at my heat treating oven. I know the blade isn't going to fit in there. It's wide enough, but it's not long enough. I'm going to try the torch. Oh, I don't think I'm going to be successful. I got to try something. This might be all right. I don't know. It looks good. I'm going to test it. The blade broke. Literally, there's no time to think about the solution. I'm just going to grab that piece of leaf spring. All right. Start forging a blade. Doesn't that get you? Some guy in a poor third world country can make stuff like this that will withstand battle. And I got $70,000 worth of equipment. I can't do it. Day four, I had to drive all day to go get some more oil. I got to get this heat treat right. Moment of truth here. I sure hope it's hard. That's the sound I've been looking for. My first oil was contaminated. The new oil, it worked just like it was supposed to. Thank you. <laughs> I've lost way too much time because of heat treating fit and finish is my forte. I don't have the chance to do that now. I am in a little bit of panic mode because my time has dwindled away. I'm going to have to beat this thing up, and it has to be an effective weapon. I had to completely forge another blade. 
Now it's day five, and I got 20 hours left. That'll work. I'm ready to heat treat. The reason this blade failed is because of what I have to heat treat with. I know the blade isn't going to fit in there. The plan is to leave a small slit at the bottom that the blade will slide in and out of. Let's give this a shot. Looks nice. If I don't get this blade heat treated correctly, I'm done. Definitely hardens. <laughs> oh, what a relief. I've got a blade I believe I can take to the final round. So now I've got to do a little fitting on my handle material. But I don't know if I have enough time to finish. Bladesmiths, to see what kind of lethal damage your weapon can do, I will take your macraca and I'll deliver lethal blows on this ballistic dummy. Greg, you're up first. You ready? Yes, sir. Let's do this. All right. That's nasty. You can mess somebody up with that thing. <laughs> this is one of the lightest swords I've ever picked up. But the most important thing, it will kill. Thank you. Paul, it's your turn. I'm ready. Well, Paul, where one was speed, this is power because it's a lot heavier. It dug in deep into the chest cavity. Overall, your Macraca will kill. Thank you. Up next, the strength test. Okay? Gentlemen, an advantage of that sword was to actually reach around the shield, hitting the man behind it. So to test the strength and durability of your blades, I'm going to strike these shields four times with each of your weapons. This kind of wood can withstand extremely brutal force. So remember, this is not about what your sword does to the shield, but what the shield does to your swords. And Craig, you're up first. Are you ready? Yes, sir. OK. All right, I don't see any nicks or damage. Blade's still sharp. Very nice. Well done. Thank you, sir. Good job. All right, Paul, you're up. Let's do this. All right, Paul. And I don't see any blade damage. And the edge is in good shape. I like the leather wrap on the handle. It's nice. So all in all, nicely done. Thank you. Next up is the sharpness test. For that, I'll give you back to Doug. The Macraca sword was used by the Zande warriors for beheading their prisoners. To see how sharp your weapons are, we're going to do a mock beheading over here. Craig, you're up first. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Let's do this. All right. Well, Craig, on a vertical chop, it was easy to control. My worry is about on a horizontal chop or slice that the weight would put pressure on my wrist. No issues whatsoever. Overall, your blade will cut. Thank you. Paul, you're up. You ready? Yes, sir. Let's do this. Okay, Paul, the feel of your blade is a little bit on the heavy side when you're doing a horizontal slice. It got hung up on the watermelon, almost cutting all the way through, though. But on the vertical slice, it just pulls you in and easily cuts all the way through. Your macraca will cut. Thank you. Bladesmiths, in just five days, you've done some exceptional work, and your blades perform very well. But in this arena of competition, there can only be one Forged and Fire champion. And that champion is. Craig, congratulations. You are the Forged and Fire champion. Thank you all. Paul, your blade did not make the cut. Paul, you gave us a powerful blade, but you fell short on sharpness. The bottom line, it underperformed the watermelons. And for that reason, we have to let you go. I accomplished what I wanted to do. There are guys on here that have made thousands of blades and didn't make it as far as I did. Take care, man. 
First thing I do when I get home is I'm gonna take a nap. It was a hell of a week, I lost five pounds. Craig, you are the Forged and Fire champion, and that's a title that comes with a check for $10,000. Congratulations. I'm quite surprised. I never thought I'd get this far. Why don't you present your blade to the judges? I certainly didn't walk away with this. Paul put up a fight, but uh, I could come there with the best looking thing, but if it doesn't perform, then you're out.